welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Well, folks, it is finally finished. This is our Lotus that we've been doing over the last, God, about 18 months. The car was actually finished quite a while ago. We just wanted to put some miles on it and get everything straightened out. Uh, let's meet uh, Jim Hall. Jim, come on in. Well, you all know Jim. Jim is our master fabricator. Professor Hall, this is <laughs> Professor Hall's opus, we call this. This is his homage to all the great... Uh, uh, Lotus designers and guys that raced them back in the day. This is what a stock Lotus looks like. This one is pretty stock, Weber's, a few other little things. And this, of course, would be the 26R. That's Jim's Techno. Tell us about that. That has a Lotus engine, correct? Yeah, the, the Techno is an Italian Formula 2 car. And like so many cars of the era, they ran these little twin cam engines. Right. Matter of fact, the first time a twin cam went out, it was at Nuremberg Ring and led the race with Jim Clark for half the race till he uh, blew something up. But now you used to wrench on this car, right? For the I did, I've, I actually did the original restoration on this car probably 35 years ago. Wow, okay. Well now Jim owns the car, and that's Jim's car back there too. The, the yeah, well, same guy, Rick Benowitz, and he bought this new and it was assembled. It wasn't a kit. Right. It came from Ian Raby Racing in England, and I have a picture of it at the docks down at San Pedro looking just like this. And this is the real Lotus 7. Yeah, this... Super 7 or 7? This is a Super 7 because right. they had the 1500 engine. Right, there. right. I mean, there have been so many as Caterham and so many other people have copied it, but this is the real thing. And what year would this be? This is 1962. 62, okay, so that's pretty cool. But let's get back to this one here. You know, we started out with a 1966 uh, Lotus. Well, we just went crazy. <laughs> We just wanted to build the ultimate Lotus. We're going to show you some of the restoration blogs. It was one of those popular things we've done, and uh, so many comments, people coming in, writing, and stopping us. When's it going to be finished? Well, it's finished. Uh, let's show you uh, the restoration blog as we went along, and then we'll come back and we'll take it for a ride. Yeah, let's take a look. This is uh, Mr. Hall's opus, as it's come to be called. People love following this uh, restoration. Well, it's not really restoration. It's uh, we're building pretty much a brand new car. Now, as you can see, the engine is in. It's got to come out again. I'm doing all the plumbing now. So when we get in close and look at this stuff, I've done all the oil hoses, all the water hoses, built the swirl pot that connects the, the radiators. Swirl pot, the water comes out of the engine and literally swirls around the tank and that takes any air bubbles out. And then it goes into the radiator right. where it gets cool, goes back to the engine. So instead of an oil cooler, it's a heat exchanger, which means you fire this thing up. This is like a race engine and you want it to warm up quickly. You want the oil to come up to temperature before you go drop the hammer on it. Right. So with a heat exchanger, it'll always keep the oil right about the same temperature of the water. So you always have like 180 degree oil. Right. The engine will be happy and uh, we'll be happy. And it's about 45 pounds less than the uh, equivalent engine that would have been in it. Look how beautiful this fits together. Each one of these pipes is individually bent and, and welded and fitted. I mean, it, it shows you how tight that is, how much precision, how much work. But look, there's just the right amount of space between everything. So nothing hits, but everything is very close. The exhaust system is in. Tell us about that, Jim. I think one of the things about this car, it's the law of unintended consequences. Every time we do something, it's like, Oh, it's not simple. Yeah. Up front, there's no clearance for the exhaust pipe. Right. So now I'm making a making an oval pipe that's like this tall. We've got that over there to get underneath the transmission because we got that special, really cool six-speed transmission. Yeah, that's gonna be great. Unintended consequences. Yeah. This is the beginnings of my exhaust system. There you go. <laughs> As you can we see. couldn't buy that in a catalog. No, no. Should have a nice sound, actually. Jim has just uh, done a beautiful job fabricating and making this oil tank. Take it, explain what's going on here. You know what's exciting and, and also tears your hair out that an oil tank is not just a container. Right. It's got all kinds of stuff going on in it. These aluminum tubes that I made in here, I had to flame bend those, which means I had to pack them with sand very carefully heat them with a torch and bend them to the exact shape that I needed. Now don't confuse that with flame broiling at Burger King. <laughs> flame broiling is where the burger goes over and it, it heats up. From, that's flame broiling. That's totally, that's totally different. This is, this is an art. Uh, this is, this is, he's an artisan. Is this a Hitachi unit? Is that what it yes, is? Yes, it is. Yeah, right. this, 
God, this little alternator, you know, the generator that comes in these loaders is, was as big as the head. There's a big giant generator. And this thing, uh, how many, how many uh, watts is this putting out? Do you uh, I think it's 85. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, it's more than double what was on there. It weighs like two and a half pounds. Yeah, and it's perfect for your Kubota tractor. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but as you can see, look at, and look at Jim's safety wiring. Everything is beautifully done. This you know, and I will admit, there I kind of gilded the lily. Because yeah. it's like, it's a street car. It doesn't need safety wire. But kind of the whole idea, it, it's a tribute to all those racing mechanics and fabricators all over the world. And so it's like, okay, an extra couple hours doing all this safety yeah. wire, just, it, it's for them. It's not because we actually need it. Yeah, we need it. It looks <laughs> good. Uh, as you see, Jim has been doing some reinforcing here. Uh, right here, this is new, right? Yeah, this was a, we have a nice bent plate that was on here before. Mm -hmm. Now we've got a rectangular tube, mm -hmm. bolts in, allows us to put the engine in easier. These plates here obviously give us more structural rigidity here. At the yeah, rear. everybody jacks up on this and it gets all bent and wavy, so we add a little plate here. Right. So this metal is really thin, it's probably only 90,000. This is how we make brake lines. Yeah. Take welding wire, bend right. it up into a pattern, then I make brake lines and get everything to fit. And I've looked at our pictures. If you look at the original pictures of this car, it's unbelievable how ugly everything is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they had a brake line and it just kind of wanders around yeah, and goes upside yeah. down and wraps around the suspension. Yeah, you know, yeah. And it's like, what were they thinking? No, this is, so, this is going to be a car that's going to be as pretty on the inside as it is on the outside. And as you can see, everything has been reinforced on the chassis here. Uh, you saw Jim doing the wiring. That was, uh, that was probably the most uh, demanding and annoying part of this thing, wasn't it? That was just unbelievable. Uh, chassis still needs to be painted. The engine's going to come out again. Uh, well, walk us through what we have here, Jim. We're getting down to really the very final stuff that I need to do to it. I've got to make some brake lines. I've got some stuff happening back there. These magnesium I, wheels are beautiful. I, this is another one of those things that, watch me drop the spinner. I mean, this is the real thing. Do you feel how heavy that is? Look at that. This doesn't weigh <laughs> anything. Look at that. I mean, how much does this weigh? What's this? Uh, it's like seven pounds, seven, eight pounds. Five, six, like yeah, yeah, pretty amazing. Um, and then our, our girling AR calipers like they used on the race cars. Of course, everything's different. So the little bridge pipe mm -hmm. that came with the caliper won't fit because right. it was made for an E-type with 15-inch wheels, not right. a Lotus with 13-inch wheels. Yeah. Uh, we fabricated all these pieces. Uh, yeah, so we got the, the pedal system in so that we'll have a, a split front and rear uh, brake masters. Yeah, this is, we all made all this stuff at the shop. And here's the trick part. Look at this here. This is what, the, you know our rapid prototyping machine where we can make anything? Well, here it is here, take a look. Well, this is all done on the rapid uh, prototype making machine. We did it in plastic, we'll make it again in yeah. metal. Our machinist, Chris, is working on the new parts. These are all 4130. Once it's all put together, welded, it'll be heat treated, so it'll be bulletproof. Right, and the cool thing, this will be a sequential box, just six speeds, bang, 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 up and down. The advantage is you can shift as fast as you like. I guess the disadvantage is you have to go through every gear, but that's okay. I like going through every gear. Roll bar yeah. is in. Yeah, I mean, this is an important thing. We want to try to save your head. Yeah. This is our fuel cell. So if you see down inside, it's got a, a safety fuel bladder. It has foam. This car is going to be so light. This body doesn't weigh what? 144 pounds. 144, okay, I thought about 75 or 80, but one guy can pick it up, which is pretty amazing. <laughs> the nice thing is I'm kind of a big guy and uh, we put the pedals far enough apart so I can wear normal shoes and not wearing ballet slippers when I drive the thing. We are close, we are very, very close on the Lotus. It's really taking shape now. We're just about done with the chassis. As you can see, suspension is in. And we have, of course, our six-speed sequential gearbox. But as you can see, it's just beautifully, beautifully done. It's kind of frightening to realize I will be the heaviest part of this car. Jim, uh, as you see, has aged uh, just <laughs> trying to build this thing, but that's all right. That's all right. He's doing a hell of a job. Okay, here we are in the spray booth, and this is a real factory 26R body. Absolutely. Uh, I would be surprised if there were more than a couple of these that made it out of the factory. So this is the real thing. Uh, this is exactly as the factory racer looked. Now Paris started sanding and 
preparing the body, we've stopped doing that for a while while we do all the work on the chassis and fit everything. As you can see, none of the holes have been drilled for the pedals or anything. You got your, your shifter hole right here. We did the dashboard in wood. It was done originally, and it was done in wood to be extremely light. We could have done it in carbon fiber, but that's getting a little, uh, I just think cost enough as it is already okay. We don't need carbon fiber. We'll do it in the wood too. It's Christmas. Rip the package open. Wrapped in swaddling clothes. Here we go. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. Ah. That's pretty cool. Look at that. And look how light it is. Well, I mean, this doesn't weigh. It's a pound and a half. It's two. something like that. <coughs> this is fiddle back walnut. I wonder how nice this is. So this thing's book matched. Company called Madeira Designs up in Santa Barbara. They did, did great this. work. How I can convey how light this is, other than going like that with my pinky finger. I mean, it doesn't weigh anything. What, what do you figure this is? Two pounds? Oh, yeah, that's just a couple of pounds. Just Maybe two pounds? Great. You don't want to get hit by an SUV, but very, very light. And of course, we'll paint that and put that on as well. Uh, Jim has uh, just done an amazing job. Pear is painting the body and preparing it right now. It's kind of like framing a house. Yeah. You know? Some stuff happens really fast, and yeah. then all the finish work takes time, but we're getting to the point where this is the finish work. Yeah, so we're, so we are very close. You know, it's amazing. This is a high-performance car, and you'd think it would overheat, but Jim did such a good job on the radiator and on the cooling system that it never gets much over 165 degrees. With the Lotus, the whole hood comes out. I am really proud of this thing. I mean, it's um, probably a dream to be able to actually take a car and do the stuff that you let me do to this. Because oh. usually my job throughout my life has been, somebody else has a dream, Jim, can you do this? Yeah. And yeah. this kind of, you let me be, have a dream and, and follow through. Well, so. it just turned out great. A pair did the paint. If you look on the wall, we took an old road and track. That's December of 1965 with Jim Clark. And we just kind of adapted our Lotus to it because I just saved that copy in the magazine because my mother's from Scotland and Jim Clark was Scottish. But as you can see, we put our garage team, have they built the ultimate Lotus Elan? And there's Bernard and of course Jim and, and George and Pear and John Pear and Dirk and Bob Sales and John Miller. Just our whole team, we put them in the magazine cover there just to have some fun. We got to get more Lotus stuff on the wall here, but that'll come later. Uh, here's a little commemorative plaque. That Jim that, put in. Well, that's another thing, Jay. It is an homage to all those guys that I worked with that aren't with us anymore. And I wanted to put a little plaque in there and say that was the idea. It's a yeah. tribute to designers and fabricators and race car guys throughout uh, that whole era, which was just a wonderful time in racing. And I think it's safe to say that this car is probably overbuilt. We have a Quaif six speed in it. And uh, you'll hear the transmission. It's a little noisy, so is the clutch. <laughs> But you can't break it. It's meant for what? 500 foot pounds of torque. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's really meant for a V8. Right. Um, and the the clutch is a little heavy because it turns out the pressure plate is for a big V8 instead of a two liter engine. You know, it doesn't but, seem that heavy to me because uh, this thing, all you have to do is just touch the clutch, and with this uh, Quaif sequential gearbox, just bing, 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 just go banging through the shift. So I don't mind it at all. Uh, it's a, it sounds like a Ducati clutch. If you ever had Ducati, you know, they sound like it'll stop. Like, <laughs> but uh, don't let that fool you. That just means it's uh, incredibly strong. Um, another thing which I think we didn't really talk about in the, the build uh, episodes that we did is the upholstery. Our upholsters did just a fabulous job. Uh, I mean, we changed a lot of stuff on this car. I mean, it, it, it's a Lotus, it's an Elan, but a lot of things have been changed. Our upholsters came in made this upholstery look like, hey, that's the way it is and the way it should be. And they did it in really short order because we had a car show we wanted to go right. to. And they brought the people in and took to get it done and, and our hats are off. To Stitch Corp, right? Stitch Corp. Yeah. And now you have to guess the weight of this car. What do you, what do you think it is? Take a minute. Thirteen fifty eight. 1,358 pounds, which is hilarious, because when I get in the car, I'm a third of the weight of the vehicle. But, well, uh, and the other thing, that's full of fuel. 
right. water and oil. Yeah, that's with fluids, yeah. 13. So I mean, dry, this thing's probably 1,300 pounds, yeah, which is yeah. pretty amazing. Yeah, and it, and it looks like an alarm. And it's, it's I think, uh, we'd like to think, if they continued the car, this is what it would be with this uh, sequential gearbox and this aluminum motor. We talked about this motor in the, um, in the restoration blog. Let's just go over one more time. Normally, this would have been a cast iron engine. Right. But this and 1,600 cc's uh, recast the block in aluminum, two liter, and we're about what? 220 horse, maybe? That, our engine builder wouldn't actually tell us, yeah. but yeah, we think it's probably about 220. Yeah, about 220, something like that. And moving this few pounds with a six speed, well, you'll see how this thing goes. But the great thing is, it's not temperamental at all. For some reason, you, you know, you usually have to drive these things with one toe touching it barefoot. But with my big clod hoppers, he was able to make it so I could actually drive this car and enjoy it. And you know, as small as these cars are, you can be pretty tall and drive them because I'm not cramped in this thing at all. There's all kinds of leg room. So it's, uh, it's probably time to take it for a ride. aspirated engine and we all like our turbochargers and stuff nowadays but the, the, the response is so immediate you know the car just literally sings it really does it's I don't know why this doesn't have a radio I don't know why you even have one in here but boy it just and with the six speed it just makes it so nice you've just got so much power on reserve all the time let's take it up in the freeway see how it cruises now as you can see it's pretty warm today we're at what 180 yeah 180 boom it doesn't move one way or the other it just stays at 180 it's really just done an incredible job here, but uh, let's see how she cruises. We've barely been out of third gear, so let's take it up on the freeway, drop it in at six. I mean, you're in sixth gear, just cruising along. Yeah.
Wow, what a car this is. I hope we were able to convey the sense of excitement driving this thing. You know, modern cars with ABS and traction control and double clutch gearboxes, you, we've gained so much, but you also, when you drive this, you realize a lot was lost. This really was the golden age of uh, auto racing and mechanical perfection. You know, I like mechanical watches, but electronic watches, because it's just, there's something about them, about turning that mainspring and hearing it, hearing it click, and when you see the the work, the, the, the way this, the wire, the safety wire, and the way everything is mechanical perfection. There's nothing electronic in this car at all. This is the way it was done back in the day, and uh, I, I don't know any modern cars that can recapture this feeling, so I want to thank Jim. Good job. <laughs> and of course, all the guys at the shop, all their names are on the poster there, and uh, it's just, just a lot of fun. This, I, to me, this is the perfect line. I couldn't think of anything I would do differently. It's uh, really turned out great, so Luckily, uh, Jim's dream was uh, mine as well. It doesn't happen very often. I know it may sound strange, but, well, you get the idea. See you guys next week.